But creativity is not restricted by the size of a budget or the square footage of a room, so here are my top 10 favorite art exhibitions from New York City last season in the category of things that would actually fit into my apartment. <laughs> Hongbo at Klein Sun Gallery. This is not what it looks like. In fact, it is 100% paper. Tens of thousands of sheets of white paper that has been stacked and hand carved. It's also been intricately hand glued so that it can accordion out and back again. Amazing. And you didn't even have to ask uh, for a demonstration. You would just walk into the gallery, stand in front of these for like 10 seconds, and then a white gloved gallery staff person would approach and then just start to manipulate one of these sculptures in front of you. Thomas Damon is a photographer who takes pictures of paper. I'll say that again. This is a photograph of a model made out of 100% paper. Construction paper, wax paper, foil paper, 100% Intricately cut, precisely folded, and invisibly glued, it has been photographed under specific light conditions to look real, but it is not. Here's the kicker. Uh, you're looking at this on a computer screen, so you're looking at pixels, and that's really nice. But in the actual gallery, there were real physical photographs developed with an old school technique called the dye transfer process, which allows photographs, in this case of paper, to be printed directly on, you guessed it, Kristen Morgan at Zach Fior Gallery doesn't use paper at all. There is no paper in this book, no cardboard on this wall. That's not even a real push pin. Kristen Morgan makes sculpture out of unfired clay. Now let me explain how crazy this is. Unfired clay looks like this, it breaks like this, and if it gets wet, it dissolves, making it the most fragile thing I have seen in a gallery all year. And then she spends countless hours hand painting each sculpture to look hyper realistically. So every sticker, every scratch is hand painted. So if you think about it, most painting for the last couple thousand years has been an optical illusion. But taking that optical illusion up into an unbelievable level in 2014 is Patrick Hughes. This is a painting by Patrick Hughes. It is not moving, uh, there is no hologram, and this is not a camera trick. What he's doing is a technique he's perfected called reverspective or reverse perspective. Uh, let me demonstrate. He is painting on a three-dimensional surface that is spatially opposite from the perspective in the image of the painting. So where it looks like the building is coming toward us, the wood construction is actually going back in space. And he's done this so well and painted so realistically that your brain can't even handle it and therefore creates this crazy optical illusion of movement where there is none. Photographer Sei Chung Leung had an exhibition of landscape photographs at Yossi Milo Gallery that changed how you see the world. They are beautiful images in their own right, but here's where it gets crazy. On the left is Paris, France, and on the right is Havana, Cuba. No Photoshop. What he does is flies all over the world and takes photographs from about the same angle with the horizon line in the exact same place. What this does when combined in the gallery is sets up these crazy surprising comparisons that destroys the borders between countries and continents. Barbara Propes takes multiple photographs of the same thing at the exact same time from different angles. She sets up multiple cameras on tripods and then I feel has some kind of radio control so she can snap that shutter on all of them simultaneously. I feel like your eye spends more time between the photographs than on either one. It literally puts you in two places or 12 places at the exact same time. And as you're sort of picking out similarities to put this mystery together, it feels like you're watching a movie that's not moving. Martin Clemus is a super high-speed still-life photographer. His photographs at the Foley Gallery were created by pouring colored paint on a vertical-facing speaker and then turning up the volume before snapping a super high-speed photograph. Here's what's super cool. The photographs are titled after the songs that were playing on the speakers. So I pulled out my iPad in the gallery to actually listen to the photographs. It's like he's compressed an entire song into a millisecond, and once you know what that is, you don't need the music to hear it. 
Jim Campbell makes images that move. His sculptures on view at Bryce Wolkowitz Gallery are composed of often thousands of LED lights that turn off and on so that when viewed from the proper angle and distance form these slow moving images. My favorite had this translucent piece of plexiglass over the front. And so those clouds are just an illusion, only the result of the LED light being farther away from the diffuser screen and therefore more blurry. And then his newest body of work were color changing LEDs that faced the wall. So these were hanging maybe three or four inches from the wall facing the wall. And then when you back up across the room, what you're seeing is the kind of the blurry reflection of these lights on the wall as they blend together and form these old home movies. Emilio Perez cuts up his own paintings. He had a show at Gallery Le Long, and let me walk you through the process. First, he coats the canvas in enamel paint, usually black or some kind of shades of gray. And then he paints a colorful abstract painting on top of it in latex and acrylic paint. Now, if you go to Home Depot, the guys will tell you never to layer latex over enamel paint. This whole water-based, oil-based thing does not get along. But it allows Emilio Perez to take an X-Acto knife, cut the first layer of paint, and remove it like a sticker in response to the improvised brush strokes that he's seeing. So it's this combination of drawing and painting and cutting that actually speeds up the brush strokes and creates not only a greater illusion of depth, but a greater physicality to the surface of the painting itself. Finally, Jessica Mean cuts up her actual canvas. So all fabric is made up of vertical and horizontal threads, the warp and the weft. Jessica cuts out one of the two and removes it in certain sections. So the color that you're seeing is actually a tiny section of a billboard that she's transferred to canvas. And wherever the canvas is blank, she has very carefully cut thousands and thousands of threads and unwoven them. I especially like this one, where she actually cut the gallery wall to match the painting. Here's the thing. The art world moves at the speed of right now, so all of that is over. But if you want to stay on top of art history as it's actually happening, so you can see this stuff in person, subscribe to my newsletter. Go to the 2percent.com and enter your email. Oh, I would also like to thank all the production and film companies that I borrowed little video clips from. If you want to watch the full clips of those, I recommend it. Uh, check out the links in the description of this video. Thanks for watching, and enjoy the galleries.